Honda Australia has bravely announced drive away fixed pricing for the 2022 HRV. <laughs> which, due to their recent range evisceration, Hannibal Lecter style, is the new entry level Honda. Like, dude, it's the cheapest one you can buy. The barrier to ownership for HRV has thus risen a staggering 27%. That's between 2020 and today. And at the same time, Honda sales have tanked. <laughs> Go figure. In the immortal words of renowned social philosopher Roger Waters, how can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? Like you, yes. Behind the bike sheds. Stand still, laddie. Ergo, all in all, the new HRV is just another brick in Honda's soon to collapse wall. I'm John Logan from AutoExpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap. For buyers. Here. Yeah. In Australia. Website for that? <coughs> yes, there. Oh, you can just click the card that's up there now, dude. And its existence is more likely than that of Honda Shitsville in two years' time, if you ask me. So, the news so far Honda boned its dealers last year and absolutely earned their opprobrium. They shut a bunch of showrooms, then they fixed prices using a loophole in Australian legislation, and drive-away prices went on a kind of bender of which the late, great Hunter S. Thompson would be proud. You've got to read Midnight on the Coast Highway Before You Die, not after, and also Hell's Angels. Like, not optional, dude. Where have you been all your life? In the process of this public boning and revenue slashing ceremony, Honda Australia boned the Jazz and the City. They eliminated the entry-level variants of its sort of extant models. And essentially, they did everything a car maker would do if said car maker's objective were to slam the gate in buyers' faces and tank sales which, unsurprisingly, is exactly what happened. Sales year-to-date, meaning for January and February 2022, are way down. For February, as a standalone month, Honda sales dropped 30% compared with February of 2021. And that was back when they still had proper dealers, right? For January and February this year, 40% down compared with Jan and Feb of 21. For the full year of 2021, Honda sales tanked by 40% compared with 2020. To put this in perspective, that is about 11,500 fewer sales or about 350 million bucks worth of reduction in revenue. And I'd suggest that very few balance sheets remain black in the face of such widespread collapse. Like, there's just not that much margin, like wholesale margin, in new cars. Honda, of course, blames this reduction, the recent collapse of its sales, on other factors, such as the pandemic and the, pu and the pewter and computer chip crisis. Gotta stop sniffing and glue before I come down here to read the prompter, honestly. Anyway, of course, the majority of motoring reporters just regurgitate this corporate bullshit, or at least that's how I see it, for fear of upsetting the advertising Apple card, right? We wouldn't want to do that in the mainstream motoring media. That's like heresy in some of those axis of evil countries. However, I'd suggest other car makers experience the pandemic and the Utah chip shortage more or less equally. And if you look at full year 2021 sales versus 2020 for them here in Shitsville, 
while Honda was doing the whole shower scene from Hitchcock's Psycho, Toyota went up by 9%. Mazda and Subaru both gained 18%. Mitsubishi added 16%. Hyundai rose 12%. Kia climbed 21%. And even Nissan, a brand which, in my view, has a questionable vehicle portfolio at best, they managed to eke out an 8% sales increase. So, if 2021 Schittsville new car sales were some kind of scientific experiment, it's pretty safe to say that we just outlined reasonable experimental controls for the pandemic and the chip shortage and the commercial operating environment. As I see it, it's only Honda that represents the anomaly here, and this must be due to their recent actions. I'd call that a pretty compelling hypothesis. Back in 2020, you could have driven away in an entry-level HRV for about 28800 bucks. Today, the base model, which is not really equivalent, but the base model today, if all you want is an HRV without the frills, that's going to cost you a fixed price of 36700 anywhere in the country. That represents a rise of almost $8,000 or 27%. This is a highly competitive price sensitive market. So the term commercial suicide springs immediately to my mind. When reimagining the HRV, Honda set out to create a car with a desirable blend of standout design, exceptional efficiency, and ultimate usability. Conceived to meet the exacting needs of modern consumers, the new model achieves a rare balance of premium SUV styling and exceptional spaciousness. Honda there, effervescing about the new HRV. And a couple of brief points on that. Firstly, you Honda dudes, would you mind kindly sticking your reimagining where the Pope don't wash the lounge room or something? You twats did not actually reimagine the HRV at all. You just designed another one, like Generation 3 or whatever it is. Could we at least respect the English language that vestigial? I note that reimagining the fucking bathroom typically does not result in an upgraded bathroom. At least, it never has for me. I typically have to gut the bathroom, then retile it and add a new crapper, etc. As for this vehicle being a, quote, premium SUV, this, in my view, is exactly the kind of marketing masturbation that is becoming more commonplace, presumably because it requires both hands and rather a substantial amount of enthusiasm, at least in my view. A Honda HRV might dream of becoming a BMW one day, like the ugly duckling looking at the swan going... But the possibility of its balls dropping quite that far. Bit remote, in my view. We're talking about a compact Japanese SUV that competes with the Eclipse Cross, the Kona, the Seltos, the XV, the CHR, Shetra. To be fair, Honda says the new base model Shitta HRV that's a technical trade term, has a spec level somewhere in between the previous VTIS and RS HRV variants. Bit of a tongue twister there. The average drive-away pricing between those two variants in 2020, before Honda contracted this terrible autoimmune disorder, was about 33600 bucks. So, on this basis... The elevation of the price is just over three grand or nine percent. In the immortal words of the perennially hard to kill Bruce Willis, yippee ki a 
mother. With the new Honda price promise, you'll always pay the same drive away price for your new Honda, excluding accessories, no matter which Honda centre you visit anywhere in Australia. Cross-border delivery fees apply. That way, you never have to haggle to get our best price. It's our new way of doing things. Visit us today to experience the joy. A women, brother. Visit that Honda Center. If you can find one, experience that joy. That stretch of the hammies, those fingers interlocking around the Achilles tendon. That joy of paying the shittest possible price, of not being able to negotiate a better deal, a price somewhere between eight grand and three grand more than you would have paid for, essentially, the equivalent vehicle just two years ago. It's just our way of saying thanks you sap. The third generation HRV will be available with advanced two motor E colon HEV hybrid electric vehicle powertrain technology for the first time on this model, representing the next step in the brand's commitment to introduce hybrid variants of each vehicle line with the arrival of every full model change. I had this rule of thumb for composing this and that, and it would be just when my sentence gets to 200 words, I'd try and break it up just a little bit and maybe use slightly more conversational language, but that's just me, dude. Now, I don't know if you can hear that out there, but uh, the rain really has taken off like Noah <laughs> couldn't take this rain. Anyway, E colon HEV, electric colon hybrid electric vehicle. Yes, Faraday, I'd suggest, would have been so damn proud. He had no friggin' idea things would get quite this popular, I'm sure. And that commitment at the top to introduce hybrid, bravely to pursue that, to go ahead and just do it, screw it, let's do it. And just 21 years after Toyota essentially proved that hybrid was probably a goer. Finger right on the damn jugular there. Senior Minato shot callers. Jesus. My strong advice here to you, the potential consumer, HRV is probably acceptable as a vehicle in isolation relative to the activities of the brand. It's definitely overpriced, though. The main risk for you, as I see it, like, say Honda does a Holden over the next couple of years and just disappears up its own overinflated ass, then you're going to be down to getting parts and servicing from some grubby hole in the wall down the seedy end of town. Just buy a Yaris Cross, a Celtos, a CHR, Kona, XV or Eclipse Cross instead. It's going to be cheaper and just as good at doing the kinds of things that you need a compact SUV to do. Now, I want to talk directly to you if you are the kind of snarky shithead motivated to write a comment such as this. There is a conflict of interest when it comes to your opinion on manufacturer fixed pricing. You offer a service to get cars cheap. Fixed pricing eliminates the need for the service you offer. Perhaps why you are against the idea. There must be many benefits to consumers from fixing the price, but you fail to mention them. Dude named Brad there. So... Here's the thing, Brattles. I, I challenge you to show us all these alleged many benefits of price fixing. In fact, most advanced Western democracies have laws against cartel-like conduct and price fixing, etc., because it's anti-consumer, meaning it always results in the worst possible deal for people like us, the consumers, right? Honda Australia is doing this 
because it's a last ditch effort to survive commercially. Their loss making became a headline boardroom issue back in Japan and desperate times called for desperate measures. They're fucking it up, of which there is no doubt, right? But desperate measures, okay? Mercedes is doing exactly the same thing, but they're doing that because they're the kind of nasty bastards, in my view, who were always at war with their dealer network and vice versa, because many of those dealers were also kind of ruthless, amoral scum, personal opinion. So this commercial arrangement kind of suited Mercedes right up until 80% of the boned dealers sued them for an incredible 650 million bucks in damages and also their sales have tanked, right? Where are we? B, B, conflict of interest, okay? I invite you to show us all exactly where my argument is flawed, like on every video, not just this one or where the data on which I based it is in error. I never recommended Honda or Mercedes previously, right? So my revenue there was insubstantial at best. And C, let's say every new car brand in the nation does a price-fixing caper thing tomorrow. I'm going to work something out with the car makers that I do recommend because they do right by their customers and because generally their product's fairly reliable. And I'll do that deal immediately when that happens, if that happens, because the one thing car makers are emphatically shit at is actually generating sales inquiries. They're terrible at it. And the market here is hyper competitive. And this is the terrain I inhabit, right? So if the $650 million question, that is the Merck dealer compensation quest, if that question fails and every car maker randomly just bones its dealers the very next friggin' day, unlikely, and I'm not speculating about the court case, just the knock-on effects if it is unsuccessful, my commercial partners might be up against it if that happens, but I'm going to be completely okay, dude, commercially. Thank you so much for your overwhelming concern on that. 